that can affect us and so many different body parts that can get sick. What if I told you that there's a hidden link, a common factor that lies at the root of all these diseases? I know it sounds crazy, but from heart disease to diabetes to arthritis to Alzheimer's and Parkinson's to autoimmunity, there is a common thread weaving these various health issues together. And what is that thread? Inflammation. At the root of all disease is inflammation. Now, not all inflammation is bad, of course. It's your body's natural response to infection, injury, or irritants. It's a significant part of our immune system that helps protect us. But when inflammation persists or becomes chronic, it starts causing some pretty serious things in the body. So whether you're someone who wakes up dealing with health issues or you're just concerned about not aging well, the thing you actually need to be focusing on is chronic inflammation. But before we start, let me tell you how to reach me and my team. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're listening on the podcast, I'm wearing a white sweatshirt today, and of course my hair looks fabulous. And if you aren't already following us on Instagram or TikTok, what are you waiting for? And also we're on threads, but I don't even know that's gonna be a thing anymore, but we're there. And most importantly, don't forget to share this with the people that you love so that they can become the game changers in their life. So let's start with what is inflammation. I always start with definitions. Here's where it gets interesting, right? Because inflammation is not all bad. In fact, it's necessary. Inflammation is your body's natural defense mechanism against harm. Think of it like your body's security team springing into action when there's a threat, when an unwanted intruder like a pathogen, right? Something that gets us sick or a damaged cell comes in. Inflammation is the initial response started by our immune system. Think about it. When you fall down and you get hurt, that area gets swollen. That's inflammation. That's a good thing. That's the body's response to bringing in all the cells it needs to heal. When the cells are injured, damaged, or attacked, they release chemicals. It's like a 911 call from your cells to your immune system saying, hey, we need some help. And the immune system responds by sending a combination of cells and proteins to handle a situation, creates a barrier so that swelling stays in one area. It lets the blood vessels expand, making sure that all the necessary cells get to the area. And this also results in some redness and some warmth because everything's so expanded and fluid is getting in, so it gets swollen. And then pain is a byproduct from this inflammation process, from the pressure of it. And sometimes inflammation even has fever, right? What is fever? Fever is your body's way of turning up the heat to create an unwelcome environment for pathogens. So together, all of this causes inflammation, the type of inflammation we're familiar with, the redness, the warmth, the swelling, the pain, and sometimes the fever. This type of inflammation is acute inflammation. It starts quickly and generally disappears in a few days. It's your body's way of saying, hey, there's a problem here. Let's fix it. And that's good. It's a good part of our body's ability to heal itself and protect itself. And then when that defensive process ends, your process goes into a healing phase, repairing tissues and cells that were damaged during this inflammation. And then inflammation has gone. So acute inflammation has a known trigger. The body goes out to contain it. And then once we heal and it all goes back to baseline. The problem is when inflammation turns chronic, when the body is persistently on high alert, constantly ready to fight. And it seems like there's no cause. And what does this do? This leaves you feeling unwell, constantly searching for answers. And the reality is, if you're living in a state of chronic inflammation, it's either because you haven't found the source of the inflammation or you thought you removed it, but you really didn't. And this is where many of you live in this constant state of, I don't feel good, or the state of having an illness that's really a state of chronic inflammation. Now, inflammation causes so many issues. Let me give you some examples. One, autoimmune disorders. Take rheumatoid arthritis, for instance, which is an autoimmune disease. Here, your body's defense mechanism actually a joint affects your joints. It attacks your joints, right? If you have a thyroid issue, that's your immune system, inflammation attacking the thyroid. Heart disease. Studies have shown that chronic inflammation causes the hardening of the arteries, right? And that is a problem. The inflammation causes chemicals that attract more immune cells, which forms plaques. That's the things that give us heart attacks and stroke. Also, the brain. The brain is obviously another vital organ. And when we have chronic neuroinflammation, inflammation up here, that's linked to neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. So it's, it results from the brain's immune so cells producing these harmful chemicals of inflammation, which damages the nerve cells. And then we have gut issues, right? IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, like Crohn's ulcerative colitis. That's inflammation. But so is leaky gut. Leaky gut is inflammation. And anyone who has IBS, and you know how I feel about that diagnosis, but whatever, that's a whole different episode. But if you have those symptoms, that is inflammation in your belly. Let's also talk about cancer. Cancer 
is also from chronic inflammation. So many studies have linked chronic inflammation to various forms of cancer. And there's a suggestion that reducing inflammation can help prevent certain cancers. Diabetes. Diabetes, especially type 2 diabetes, that we know it has a lot of causes, nutritional, but it also has to do with inflammation because inflammation leads to insulin resistance. In fact, there's a term that's been used specifically for inflammation around diabetes called meta-inflammation, metabolic inflammation, and that really activates the immune system. So the point is, you're starting to see that inflammation is part of autoimmune issues, heart issues, brain issues, endocrine issues, cancer. Inflammation is that underlying thing under all diseases. So now we have to ask ourselves, where does it come from? Let's start with some of the obvious sources and then move on to some of the lesser known sources of inflammation. Number one is going to be nutrition. You knew I was going to say it, right? The standard American diet, also referred to as SAD because it's very sad. It's one big inflammatory mess. If you're still eating the standard American diet, you're eating fire. And let's see why. Let me just make a really quick list of why standard American diet is a hot mess in case you're not convinced. One, high sugar intake. Excess sugar leads to insulin resistance, which raises inflammation. Unhealthy fat. Usually, standard American diet has trans fat, right? Think of your chicken wings, your french fries, prompts inflammation. Omega-6 and omega-3. You guys might be familiar with omega-3, but there is such a thing as omega-6. We want more 3 than 6. But in the standard American diet, we have more 6 than 3. The 6 is in your vegetable oils, that stuff that the food is deep fried in. That's the omega-6 versus omega-3 which is salmon and flaxseed and, and nuts, and we don't usually see that in the standard American diet. Processed foods full of chemicals causes inflammation. The low nutrient content, right? The standard American diet doesn't have a lot of nutrition in it. The nutrients, we need that to bring down inflammation. And weight gain, the standard American diet leaves you hungry, craving more, so you end up gaining weight, which is inflammatory. The list goes on and on, but you're getting the picture. Every time you sit down to eat a standard American diet meal, it's a source of inflammation. You're adding to your unwellness and your sickness with every bite. Moving on from nutrition, we have to talk about the gut microbiome. If you watch me at all, you already know about the microbiome. But here's a quick cliff note for anyone new. So first of all, hi, welcome to the Vortex. I'm glad that you're here. You're officially in the rabbit hole. And a quick you know, rundown of what the microbiome is. It's billions of microscopic organisms that live inside of us. And there's an episode somewhere on my channel. You could check it out. And we need to have a good balance of the good bacteria and the bad bacteria. When it's not balanced, we have inflammation. These bacteria produce things. The good guys produce things we need. The bad guys produce things we don't want. And a perfect harmony is what we need. And that is how we keep our health on point. So how do we have an imbalance? Well, standard American diet causes imbalance, but also antibiotics, medication, alcohol, lack of sleep, stress. And once we have this imbalance, which is called dysbiosis, you have inflammation. Now, you might feel the inflammation. You might have bloating and cramping and diarrhea and constipation, and you're like, wow, my gut's really inflamed. But be warned, you might have no GI symptoms at all. Your stomach might be fine, and you might say to yourself, wow, I probably don't have a microbiome issue, but that would be a mistake. If you have an autoimmune issue or a chronic illness or you're taking medication, you have a microbiome issue, even if your belly feels fine. So don't be fooled by a calm belly. And if your belly isn't calm, then you already know you have inflammation. Either way, inflammation that's triggered by dysbiosis, it's not staying in your gut. Why? Because the body is actually connected. It turns out that the belly is connected to everything else. Even though your GI doc is in one office and your heart doctor is in another office, in our body, it's connected. I know, mind-boggling. So you have inflammation in your belly, and guess what? It impacts every system in your body, from your heart to your brain to your skin to your autoimmunity, all of it. And that's why inflammation is linked to so many diseases, because it's all connected. So what else causes inflammation? Chronic stress. Now, we all experience stress, and there's no way to have a stress-free life. But when we have this stress, day after day after day, it becomes an obstacle to our health and well-being. Let me explain why. When you're in a stressful situation, your body shifts all of the operations to manage the stress. If you have a fire in your kitchen, everything, all resources are going to divert that fire. No one was worried about the curtains or whether the wallpaper looks nice or whether it smells good in the house, right? Everyone's worried about the fire in the kitchen. 
That's how your body works. If you're stressed, all resources are going to manage the stress. Nothing is going to restoration. Nothing is going to repair. So over time, this stress tells your body to keep prioritizing the stress response. And this creates a cascade of issues as your body isn't taking time to repair or maintain. Again, inflammation goes up. Okay, we talked about nutrition. We talked about microbiome. We talked about stress all as causes of inflammation. Of course, I'm going to mention sleep here because you already know what I'm going to say. I don't care how much gluten-free ice you're eating. If you're not sleeping, your health is not on point. End of sentence. And your inflammation is higher. But let's talk about other sources of inflammation besides that. Chronic infection. You need to know that there is a possibility that you might have a chronic infection inside of you. Now, some infections might hang around for a long time because your body can't really get rid of it. So think of chronic Lyme. Now, I know some of you don't believe in chronic Lyme, and that's okay. This talk is not for you, but those who know, know. Or H. pylori. Sometimes you have H. pylori and you don't even know it. The point is, there are things, there's pathogens that could be in your body that your body is constantly trying to overcome, constantly trying to mount a response to, which is creating this low-level inflammation, right? And Because it's trying to battle it. Another one doesn't doesn't get talked about a lot is chronic mold exposure. Now, yes, mold is everywhere, and I did a whole episode on this. Not all mold is bad, and not everyone who's exposed to mold has a mold issue. But some people cannot eliminate the mold from the system. Maybe they don't have the genes for it. Even a small exposure is too much for them. And sometimes, even if you have the genes to eliminate, it's possible that your environment has so much mold in it that you're simply unable, you're overloaded, and you can't get rid of it. Either way, this is a person whose body has been fighting every single day to eliminate this mold. And this battle causes inflammation. And that inflammation will cause disease. Until you eliminate the source of inflammation, you never get better. Here's another one we have to talk about when we're talking about inflammation, adrenal fatigue. And I did a whole episode on adrenal fatigue and it ties into stress. But adrenal fatigue is when after so many years of stress, you eventually can't handle it and you're just exhausted. And what happens is your cortisol is constantly low. Now, you think of cortisol as your stress hormone. Cortisol is actually a natural anti-inflammatory. So if your cortisol is low all the time because you're so stressed that it can't produce anymore, you're actually missing out in a really strong anti-inflammatory component that is found in cortisol. So now, not only are you exhausted, but you're constantly inflamed, which further deteriorates your health. So what I'm saying so far, just to be clear, is that inflammation causes disease, right? It causes everything. And your mission is to find the cause of the inflammation. Is it your nutrition? Is it your gut? Is it your stress? Is it a hidden infection or toxic exposure? And until you find the source, you won't be able to reduce the inflammation and manage your disease. Okay, so we have to find what the source is, right? And just like we talked about what causes them, now we're going to talk about how to undo it. So let's start with nutrition. And I need to remind you, nutrition is more than just counting calories, right? Our food contains specific information that communicates directly with our biology. And we can use this to our advantage. So many foods, especially those in high trans fat, sugar, processed ingredients, trigger an increase in inflammation in the body. Now let's flip this and focus on what we should include in our diet, right? Believe it or not, what you put on your plate determines how your body responds to inflammation. So the goal is to eat the rainbow. When your fruits and your veggies have color, that color is called a phytonutrient. It is literally nature's medicine that plays a crucial role in reducing inflammation. For instance, red foods like tomatoes and strawberries contain lycopene, a powerful antioxidant that combats inflammation. Green veggies like spinach and kale, vitamin K. Orange and yellow foods, including carrots and oranges, deliver vitamin C and beta carotene, both essential for strong immune system. Purple foods like blueberries and eggplants are packed with antioxidants that helps inflammation. So the more colorful your plate, the more nutrients you get to fight inflammation. It's not only visually appealing, but it also is scientifically backed method to mitigate and manage chronic inflammation. Next, we have to fix the gut. You know that the gut is your second brain. Did you know that 70% of your immune system is in your gut? So think about what happens when there's fire in there. And how do we fix the gut? Again, that's an entire episode, but quick cliff notes. It's a five R approach, remove, replace, re-inoculate, repair, rebalance. And like I said, it's a whole episode, but quickly we have to remove the things that are not good for us. We have to replace digestive enzymes or hydrochloric acid if we need to. 
re-inoculate with probiotics, repair. We repair with certain supplements like L-glutamine and omega-3. And then we rebalance, which means we take the time for a long-term strategy. And again, we can go into details in another episode, but the point is, if you want to calm down inflammation, you have to really spend time healing your gut. Third thing you have to do, you have to improve your sleep. And sleep is so overlooked when it comes to managing inflammation. But research shows time and again that it has such a critical role in inflammation. When you sleep, your body works on repairing and restoring damaged tissue, flushes out waste products, regulates the immune system, calms down inflammatory markers. And of course, during sleep, you regulate your immune system. So if your body's well rested, it's better equipped to deal with any inflammation that comes your way. So you have to do your best to improve your sleep. You also need to address your stress. Now, how do we address it? I know we cannot eliminate it and it's not everyone can go to a yoga or a meditation class, but sometimes it's just about sitting in your car and taking a deep breath. Just taking a deep breath. And every time I talk about taking a deep breath in one of my episodes, I find myself slowing down. I find my heart rate calming down. My speech slows. Just by talking about taking a deep breath, I'm already managing my stress. It takes a few seconds. Consider doing that. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And then everyone asks about supplements. And I'm going to give you a list of some really great supplements for inflammation. But remember, supplements are supplements. They're not the main star of the show. They're helpful assistants. They fill in the gaps. So here are our top picks for managing inflammation. Number one, omega-3. You can't have an anti-inflammatory conversation if you're not taking omega-3. That's all I have to say about that. Next on the list is curcumin or turmeric. And this is a spice. You could add it to your food and it relieves, it lowers inflammation and it blocks something called NF-kappa B, which is a molecule that travels and causes havoc and it's great to calm that down. Resveratrol. This is a powerful antioxidant. I have a liquid version. I put it in my shake every morning and it's amazing for inflammation. You've all heard of vitamin C and how it helps to boost immunity, but did you know that it also has an anti-inflammatory effect? So get that in there. And lastly, let me mention alpha lipoic acid. Sometimes it's sold as ALA and that's a fatty acid that is naturally found in our body and it is both an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory and it's amazing. So just get that. But remember, before you run to your store, and that includes my store, I have a store online with all these supplements, but before you run, remember that your nutrition, your gut, your lifestyle are doing most of the heavy lifting here. Supplements are great sidekicks, but they're not going to save the day on their own. So to recap, at the heart of all disease is inflammation. At the heart of all I don't feel good itis is inflammation. At the heart of all I think something's wrong with me is inflammation. Your goal is to find the source of inflammation and remove it. Sometimes it's as simple as fixing your belly and your sleep, and sometimes you have to dig deeper for chronic infections or exposure to toxins. Either way, if you don't find the source of inflammation, you will not get better. You need to find the why. You could try it on your own. If you need a little help, you can get my book. It's called It's Not In Your Head, and it's available on Amazon. Or find yourself a guide to help you through it. If you want to work with me and my team, we're at the new method, new is spelled with a K, on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, threads. And the reason I call it the new method is because of you, all of you, you always knew there was a better way. I'll see you next week.